in our hearts. Put them in our minds. Let them settle in our personalities forever. In Jesus' name. This evening, I'm talking on the sins of the tongue. The sins of the tongue. Allow me to begin by telling you ten reasons why the tongue, your mouth, your lips are very important in the worship of God. Number one, James chapter 1 verse 26 says that if any man claims to be religious, a worshiper of God, but cannot bridle his tongue, all his Christianity is useless. Shall we all read it? Go. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. The way you talk shows God, your Christianity. If you cannot rule your tongue, everything you are doing for God can be spoiled by just the way you talk. Number two, the way you talk is a correct measure of how mature a Christian you are. James chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man. He is a mature man. The way you talk is a correct measure of how spiritually mature you are. Number three. Jesus says that the words of your mouth will be used to judge you on judgment day. Matthew chapter 12. We will read verse 36 and 37. Your words will rise up on judgment day. Every single word you have ever spoken. And by your words you will be acquitted. By your words you will be condemned. Reason number four. The way you speak is critical because it reveals your heart directly. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Matthew 12, 34. Out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks. Let's try Luke. Luke 6.45. Please, let's all read it. The good man brings good things out of the good store up in his heart. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart his mouth speaks. Any human being, when you are talking, if you are speaking stupid things, it's because your heart has told stupid things. It's not your tongue which is the problem. If this, uh, this clock eh, is reading wrong time, the problem is from the person who set it and the battery. It's not the hands. So any time you talk, your heart has stored profane. That's why you are speaking profane. Your heart has stored pornography. That's why you are storing pornography. Children who learn to insult is because their parents insult or the school they are attending, their friends insult. That's all. Out of the abundance of the store of your heart, your mouth speaks. Therefore, no human being can say, oh, I said, oh, I was only joking. You are not joking. 
You are not joking. You are like that. Reason number five. Number five, why the words of our mouth are important is because your mouth can make you dirty. Matthew, let's read chapter 15, verse 11, verse 18 and 19. So, your mouth can make you dirty before God. Because with the same mouth, you claim promises of God. You cast out demons. But the same mouth, you insult people made in the image of God. How can one well bring out good water and bad water? Number six. Number six is that the Bible is clear that you are rewarded according to the words of your mouth. In Proverbs chapter 18, verses 20 and 21, the Bible says that a man eats from the words of his mouth, whether good or evil, because the power of life and death is in the tongue. Let's read it together. Go. On the fruit of his mouth, a man's stomach is filled. With the harvest of his lips, he is satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Uh, uh. Many girls, because they are not paying income tax on the words they speak, they talk. Hey, let me talk. Allow me. Let me talk my mind. You can speak your mind if your mind is of use. But if your mind is useless, you don't bring it out. Eh? Proverbs 17, 28 says, Even a fool, when he keeps quiet, he is taught wise. Let's all read it. Even a fool is taught wise if he keeps silent and discerning if he holds his tongue. Even if you are a stupid lady, but you know when to keep quiet, people will respect you. But when you open your mouth, you remove all doubt. <laughs> For me, I like speaking my mind. Speak your mind if your mind is worth speaking. If it is not, you do the world and yourself a, a service by keeping quiet. Reason number seven. Your mouth is the power base of God. The highest anointing a Christian carries is in his mouth. Should I come again? Prov uh, Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 19. I like the King James, but let's see what this one says. NIV. Let's all read it. Go. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will restore you that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let these people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. Let read King James for us. Let's try that one. I like King James Rand or N, uh, okay. King James or NKG. Yes. Do you see? He says, Therefore, that says the Lord, if you return, if thou return, then I will bring thee again. And thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the pressures from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. 
you your mouth becomes God's mouth. All the anointing that we are talking about is not in anointing oil. How much anointing oil did Jesus use before raising Lazarus from the dead? Did he anoint the grave? You know, some men of God make it as if anointing the anointing bottle is the end of the world. How much anointing oil did Jesus use before he spoke to the, uh, the storm and it was calm? You see, your mouth is the greatest carrier of God's power. Therefore, it carries more anointing than the anointing oil. Those things you can carry in your mouth. Your mouth is God's mouth. Let's read it. Matthew chapter 10, verse 20. And Luke chapter 21, verse 15. It will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Luke 12, 12. Uh, okay, let's read the 21, 15 together. Go. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. God says, he will, Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. He will give you words and wisdom which none of your adversaries can can say nor resist. Then Luke 12, 12. A greatest carrier of God's power in your life is not anointing oil. It's not blessed handkerchief. It's not a man of God laying hands on you. It's your mouth. Are you okay? If you are not satisfied, I can go ahead. Mark. Mark. Let's read Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. Anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea. Say to the mountain, not anoint the mountain. The greatest carrier of power and anointing in your life is your mouth. Number eight. Your salvation is in your mouth. Romans chapter 10. Verses 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation, your salvation is in your mouth. The power, that's number nine, the power to cast out evil spirits is in your mouth. The power to tell evil spirits, go out, is in your mouth. You can read the other passages, Acts chapter 16, verse 16 to 18, etc. All deliverance ministers must learn not to talk by heart. Because your mouth is your pressure point. For the devil. Just. No, we will not read it. Read, let's look at 18. 16 to 18, but let's look at 18. He turned around and said to the spirit. Yes. Are you okay? Do you get the point? 
is your mouth that addresses the spirit and tell it, tells it to come out. Therefore, if you don't watch how you talk, when you, are, you meet evil spirits, they think you are only joking. It's one of those jokes you have been cracking the whole day. Let me make point number nine. Number ten. Ah, okay. We've got there early. The sound of your voice and your words can cause God to destroy the works of your hands. Let's read it from Ecclesiastes chapter 5. It is good to read from verse 1 all the way to verse 5. But let's take it poco a poco. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the works of your hands? Are we, are we, are we getting somewhere? Allow me to add Proverbs 10, 19. You can call it point number 11, but I wanted to get to only 10. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19, the Bible says, When words are many, sin is not absent. He who holds his tongue is wise. One big way to show wisdom is to watch the way you talk. Are we okay? Okay. Now let me deal with the sins of the tongue. For this evening, I just want to take ten. I will try as much as possible to be brief. The sins of the tongue are things we do and say with our tongue which brings trouble to us. Number one is murmuring. In Numbers chapter 12 let's read verses 1 Okay, it's the whole chapter but Let's, let's read verse 1 to 3 and let me explain the rest of the story. The end of the story is that God struck Miriam with leprosy. And he wanted to deal with Aaron also. But he was the high priest. And if he struck him with leprosy, he has spoiled the whole high priesthood. So he left him. Murmuring means speaking against somebody in authority when you cannot confront the issue. So, you see, in the Greek of the New Testament, it is called gonguzo. When somebody is in authority and you want to speak against the person, you need to watch how you talk. And because of democracy, now everybody is free. You just talk against your president. Talk anyhow. But you need to be careful because Miriam is the elder sister of Moses. When they put Moses in a basket on the river Nile, it was Miriam who stood there watching until the princess came, Pharaoh's daughter came, and she organized things quickly. But when he spoke against, when she spoke against the elder brother, the younger brother, God smote her with leprosy. She was a prophetess herself. But God whipped her. Seven days. She was as white as snow. 
She couldn't come into the camp. Two. Slander. Slander is when you hear something bad about somebody. You have not checked to see whether the thing is correct or not. But because you secretly don't like the person, then you go about spreading it. We call it slander. And everybody wants to put his finger inside and taste. You need to watch how you utter slander. Because in Psalm 15, in the Old Testament, the Bible asks which people will go to heaven. And in describing them, we are told that it's for people who don't utter slander. Let's all read it. Go. Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? Next. Let's go through one verse at a time. Mark is discipling. So, go. He whose work is blameless and who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from his heart, yes, and has no slander on his tongue, who does his neighbor no wrong, and cast no slay on his fellow man. Next. Who despises a vile man, but honors those who fear the Lord? Who keeps his oath even when it hurts? Yes. You see, this is why you shouldn't divorce. Anyway, who lends his money without usury? And does not accept a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things will never be shaken. Sin number three. A lying tongue. A lying tongue is bosman no fear time. Is somebody who when he tells you to look up, you should look down. Is somebody who has trained his tongue to tell lies until when he is lying, he himself thinks it is the truth. Bible says six things the Lord hates. And the seventh is an abomination to him. Let's read Proverbs chapter 6. We are taking it from verse 16. Yes. Let's take it. Go. There are six things the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked schemes. Feet that are quick to rush into evil. A false witness and a man who stirs up dissension among brothers. Number two is a lying tongue. Oh, no, no. This is number three of the sins. But number two of the seven things that God abominates. Psalm 101. Let's read from verse 5 to 7. Go. Whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, him will I put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, him will I not endure. Six. My eyes will be on the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. He whose work is blameless will minister to me. Seven. No one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. 
Do you want more? First Peter chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. Listen to Jesus. Go. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. 22. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. Are you happy? <clears throat> Revelations 21 verse 8. Go. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic acts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Are you okay? Are you satisfied or you want more? Revelation chapter 14 verse 5. Some people have met the standard. Look, look at them. Revelation 14:5. No lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. This is Revelation 14. From verse 1, he said, I saw the lamb with the 144,000. And he calls them, no lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. So one of the sins of the tongue is lying. Number four, flattery. Flattery is telling somebody, hey, you're looking nice. Hey! When you really know that, the dress this sister is putting on is disgracing Jesus Christ. Is telling somebody, an untruth just to please the person. An exaggerated version. Let's read Proverbs chapter 29 verse 5. Proverbs 29 verse 5. Go. Whoever flatters his neighbor is spreading a net for his feet. I like Proverbs 28-23. Let's all read it. Go. He who rebukes a man will in the end gain more favor than he who has a flattering tongue. A flatterer is somebody you go about just telling people what they want to hear so that they can give you the things you want. Flattery is a sin of the term. Number five is foolish jokes. Foolish jokes. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 9 uh, 18 and 19. Proverbs, Proverbs 26, verse 18 and 19. We are all reading it together. Go. Like a madman shooting firebrands or deadly arrows is a man who deceives his neighbor and says, I was only joking. You know, even preachers get into the pulpit and crack silly jokes. You know, hey, your mother is searching for you. Your mother. Then you turn and say, oh, April fool. <laughs> oh, I was just kidding. Oh, don't mind me. Don't mind me. Next time, when you tell the devil anything, he knows you are just kidding. 
Because you are like that. Sometimes you, you joke like that. So he takes you seriously that you are a joker. So, Ephesians chapter 5. Let's read all the way from verse 4. Let's take it together. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 4. Go. Neither should, nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. 5. For of this you can be sure. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Look at the three of them. Let's bundle it together because of the time. Yes? Verse 4. You go to the verse 4 and let's look at the three of them. You see? He says obscenity. Hmm? Some people, when they talk obscene, mentioning private parts of people and so on, dirty language. Hmm? There is a hall in, in the University of Ghana like that. Come over for all. all our songs, like Sana, Sana for Jesus, they will put in the private part of women and things in the song. So when they are singing it, it's profane obscene. You see? There are some people they speak in tongues. But when you get close to them and they are talking, you want to spit. Because of the type of why? Obscene. Why? And then he says, foolish talk and cause joke. I want to add all together. Let's read the uh, Mark chapter 7, 21 to 23. And I think I want to... Mark 7, 21 to 23. Go. For from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, Greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. The part I'm interested in is folly. Some people, when they speak, their mouth speaks stupidity, foolishness. They just delight in saying foolish things. What else should you do? That it makes you dirty. You've got it? Now, let me finish off. By saying that the whole list of Gossip and double talk. You know, some people are like that. They call it diplomacy. You know. When, you see, they are, they are not exactly lying. But they are not exactly telling the truth. So they blow hot and cold. You see? By fool. No, no. What I really mean is that you look very beautiful. You see? And the way you, you know, yeah. so the politicians call it diplomacy, double tongue. Hmm? You say when you meet women, you say, "Look, you women, you are the best in the world." When you meet men, you say, "Men, you are the best in the world." Why? Because you you are trying to be diplomatic. Diplomatic is from die, meaning two. And you see, so double talk. Some people are like that. And others too, they, they have what we call malice. Malice. 
malice is you plan evil in your heart and yet you sugarcoat it. It's like you know, have poison but you wrap it up with sugar and, and, and you shoot it. So you want to show your wife because you are angry. So she knows you like fufu. So when you get home, you wait. She pounds the fufu and sweats and soup and everything. And comes to place it on the table. Then say, Oh, today I would rather have tea. You know, I, 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 I want to have some tea. Because you want to show her, but you don't want you don't want to do it openly. We call it malice. You plan evil, but you hide it. That's what the Bible calls malice. Some people, they are, when they speak fair, they mean trouble. I've forgotten the passage, but it looks like I, uh, Proverbs, uh, Psalm 55. Let's check it. Psalm 55. It should be verse 21 or 22. Let's try it. If it works, then it's the Holy Spirit who has reminded me. Ah! It has worked. Let's, let's all read it. His speech is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords. This is what we mean by malice. You see, the person, when he meets you, he talks nicely, he looks like he's your friend, everything is okay, but everything he's telling you, there is evil behind it. Let's read Romans chapter 3. Romans 3, 20, mm -mm, 13 and 14. Romans 3, 13 and 14. I think so. Good. All of us, go. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Have you met somebody like that? His throat is a grave. You see, Bible says that when a, there are certain women, they are poison on this earth. And if God doesn't like you, He will let you fall into their hands. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Is it 28 or 29? Ecclesiastes 7, 26. Yes. My wife likes that verse. So. Let's all read it. Go. I find more bitter than death the woman who is a snare, whose heart is a trap, and whose hands are chains. The man who pleases God will escape her, but the sinner she will ensnare. Brothers, are you okay? So, please, what, what I want to end with is that Your mouth is critical in the worship of God. You must train your mouth so that corrupt things don't come out of your mouth. But words which build up people and are seasoned with salt. Let's read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Ephesians 4.29 and Colossians 4.6. Go. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. You see, when you are talking, don't let corrupt words come out of your mouth. Colossians 4, 6. Oh, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Whenever you are talking, let grace come out of your mouth. Let's look at Colossians 3, 8. 
because he is balancing. You see, he says, go, but now you must rid yourself of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Hallelujah. I believe we are ready for prayer now. I want you to look at your life. If God wants to hold your words against you, will you survive? We are going to rise up. No, no, we won't rise up as yet. Those who want to change, they should rise up. Not everybody. If you want to change the way you talk, so that you can become you can become God's mouth. You don't want to be Charlie Champlain so that whenever you appear, people are laughing because for you, buffoonery. <laughs> Sometimes, have you ever seen some of these uh, university students dancing before? Right in the house of God, they have brought their buffoonery are you a chimpanzee? <laughs> you see? So, please, if you want to carry God's mouth, you need to check the way you talk. And if you are not ready to change it, don't stand up. Because nobody is chasing you. You can take your time and change. But if you stand up now, it means you want to change from today. You want God to come and touch your mouth. You want God to come and help you. I forgot to mention anger. Some people, when they are angry and they talk, they intentionally speak to hurt you. You see, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. Ah, if we don't read that verse, we won't sit down. Listen, Proverbs 12, 18. He says, reckless words, let's all read it. Good, go. Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Some people, they speak and it pierces like a sword. And they say it so that it can hurt you. Say, hey. You see? And when you do that, your tongue doesn't carry healing. This is why when you are going to marry, watch angry people. Even if you are in relationship with somebody who is angry, this night, break it. Tell... tell Tell, I'm serious. Okay, let's read it. Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs 22, verse 24 and 25. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are in relationship with somebody who gets angry by heart, break it this night. Go. Do not make friends with a hot-tempered man. Do not associate with one easily angered, or you may learn his ways and get yourself ensnared. Do you believe? Or if you don't believe, go ahead and marry him and see. It's, these are not my words. Fortunately, I didn't write the Bible. Tell him that if he won't change this anger, you are, your soul is not coming into the marriage. Shall we begin to pray? I want. Shall we begin to pray? I want to invite the prophetic ministry to come and take over.